joining us in the studio, as I would say, Niranjan, our in-house expert. And uh, sometimes we like to compete with each other. This time he hasn't got any model because there's not much of a model to do. But Shijanji, we have something for you. <laughs> Let's go to that wall and perhaps uh, tell our viewers as to what really works has worked out uh, in this entire mission and the challenges that still <coughs> remain. Uh, Let's put that out. Now, what we have done is essentially the entire docking process and the taking it from thereafter. Mm -hmm. I hope it's not as similar as to your models that we make, but let's try and help our viewers understand this is the part right. where the docking actually takes place. What's the crucial aspect of it? So here you're showing the docking. This right. is a phase which happened a few days ago, yeah. where uh, this is your Dragon module. Right. This is an International Space Station. Right. Now, the International Space Station is about four and a half lakh kilogram, about half a million kilogram, huge contraption in space, a huge device in space. This one is about 10,000 kilograms. This has to come close to the International so, Space so Station. At any given point in time, the International Space Station would have how many astronauts? Well, it can have up to 11. Uh, okay. But usually it's about four or five astronauts which you have. Right now it had seven. So this is the place where you've had the two astronauts uh, yes, the two carrying astronauts. out the experiments, saying that we are not stranded, we are essentially being there. Uh, yes. And they said that a lot of scientific experiments have been carried out while they were basically Correct. staying there so over the, the last nine so months. Actually, International Space Station is the most expensive project ever built by humankind. Right. It's about a $175 billion worth project. It's about 107 meters in length and about 80 meters in width. Okay, and this so is the interaction. The it's going at 27,000 kilometers per hour right, right now. It has to come at 27,000 kilometers plus additional five, six kilometers, come near the International Space Station at the docking bay. So how does the maneuvering really take place? Because you're looking <clears> at the speed that they're coming in and perhaps to then reduce the space and then the docking to take place. Some, right. Something that I think so India has also tried to yes. work this out in the last docking experiment. We, we also did the we space. also did docking of two satellites. Right. It's similar. The process is similar. In fact, docking smaller satellites is harder compared okay. to larger because the momentum is smaller, so the shift happens huge. So right. India's mission was quite complicated. It, it was small satellite, but it was equally complicated. But in this case, you have live astronauts. Anything which goes wrong, will have a bearing on human life. So this life. had the crew also coming, yeah, this has, crew this, nine. This has crew nine. This has crew four nine. people, right. crew nine, which docks. And then these, it, it's a, it's, it takes a few hours to actually do that. Okay. There's a depressurization which happens because you have to balance the pressure of both these things. They have to not rotate at all relative to each other. So they have to be absolutely static to each other. Rotation also you have to check, okay. not just the linear motion. Once the docking happens, the astronauts would move from Dragon into International Space Station. Okay. They will change their spacesuits. They will greet. You saw the greeting. The, right. Those videos right. were there. It's a, uh, it seems like, uh, you know, it's a normal greeting. It's not. You are there up in space, 420 kilometers, nobody. And you've just got a few human beings. You right. really greet them well. That's what we saw. The okay. astronauts did about, uh, you know, about two days of handover activities. International Space Station is quite complicated. It is a mission done by multiple countries. Right. Multiple languages operate there. So you do this handover, and then the process which we are now seeing happens, which is... So we're going to go to that process. Yes. So this is where you have the astronauts moving. Moving in, inside, spending, yes. Yeah, spending some time, and then you have uh, the other two astronauts coming in. So the hatching aspect, can you help us take us to the next so, step? Yeah, so the, the hatch, uh, let, let it come back and I'll tell you where the hatch is, right? Okay. Yeah. So, so there are two so, sides of it. One is, one is coming from uh, this, this side. Right. So this hatch and the hatch of the International Space Station. Okay. So the, this has to basically fit into that particular hatch which the International Space Station has. Right. So it is like a, it's like a parking bay, okay. but of course far more complicated than a parking bay. And you have to park your spacecraft accurately in that parking bay, which is the hatch. Once the hatch opens, the astronauts can move from one, the, the spacecraft, the, the capsule into the International Space Station. Right. So that is what you have to do. So what happens thereafter? Aditi, if we can just move to the other, other graphic right now. Now that's the detachment aspect that we are just trying to yeah, you let's know, see what happens it. now. Yes, so this is attached here. Okay, so now, now let, let it play again and I'll tell you. This is the de-docking process. Okay. Docking, de-docking, okay. right? So how the de-docking happens? We see that this is attached to one of the parking bays. The astronauts would have moved inside this. Sunita Williams and three other astronauts, Sunita Williams, Butch Wilmore, and the crew nine, two astronauts, which went in September. So they will all move into this. Okay. And the next thing which they will do for about one hour, there are 12 bonds, there are 12 like 
you know, they are, uh, they, are, uh, they are attached to each other through 12 those such bonds. You have to open them all. It's done by an AI. So how, uh, what's, the, what, what's the timeline that you really It takes about at? an hour. It okay. takes about one hour to detach itself. But that is quite complicated. Because remember, in space, there's nothing to cushion you. So if you detach slightly with an error, you might go and crash into the International so Space Station does, Do you have control of, at that point in time? You do. So it's usually AI, but there's, a, there's an override, the okay. human override. Uh, we didn't have to use it. Thankfully, we shouldn't have to use it. Uh, and this slowly drifts away. So in the diagram, it's going really fast. So this is completely programmed. Everything is programmed. Everything is programmed. And humans just take over if something goes wrong. Okay. We still don't trust computers 100% when it comes right. to space. So this first process is getting away from the International Space Station only a few meters. Right. At this point, you don't really use the engines too much. Minor thrusting. There's 16 engines in this. Small engines, 16 thrusters. The thrust to basically move to out move away from and the, also to land. When you're landing, you'll still have to balance yourself. Okay. Right. So those are those are very important. It carries right. about uh, 2,500 kilograms worth of fuel. Okay. So that to you know those 16 thrusters, it moves slightly away, and then once it has a safe distance of a few hundred meters, then the engines start taking over. So does, do you then take control from inside? Does that? Yeah. Happen? Now you're on your own. Okay. International Space Station has nothing to do with you now. It's only NASA. The control command center, the AI, and the pilots on board, the four astronauts. The next stage, which has already been achieved now, so you have redocked. The next stage would be to move away. Then the thrusters begin. They take full force. That takes about an hour to move away from the International so Space Station. So this is the moving that we're talking about? Yes. Yeah, so now you're moving away from the International Space Station, and you have to get into a stable orbit around the Earth. When do you actually pick up the momentum? This is, a, talking about the, this is the part this is, this this is is the last stage, actually. Phase that we are this is a re-entry. In but? between these two, yeah. about for 10 hours, and that's why it takes so much time, about 10 hours, this thing, this uh, our Dragon module, will keep orbiting around the Earth. Okay. And if, with every orbit, it will lower itself. And it'll come near and near. And at this stage, now let's come. Now, now, now this stage comes. This right. is the most complex. Remember in Chandrayaan, we talked about the, the 12 minutes right, of terror. Right. This is the five minute of terror. So right. I, I pretty much second guessed that, that this, this must, must be the terror. Yeah, phase. You see the fire, right? <laughs> Carry so, on. So first thing that happens is that it is carrying something called a trunk. The trunk is carrying solar panels because the battery is not enough to last for 20 hours. Okay. So it has solar solar panels and it has radiators. Radiators to dissipate the heat away. Right. Not this heat, but the electronic circuit heat. It throws that away. So it jettisons that and then begins the re-entry. This is the re-entry. It has to straighten itself, much like Chandrayaan, remember? It straightened right. itself and this is the heat shield. This part is the heat shield. It is the one which should face the atmosphere. Once it enters the atmosphere, the atmosphere, like any other thing, tries to burn itself. Right. It, it, will, it will, because of the friction, it's going at 27,000 kilometers per hour. Massive amount of kinetic energy. When it strikes the atmosphere, the atmosphere tries to burn it by the friction. Right. That's how we get the shooting stars. So this becomes a shooting star, but it doesn't because it has a heat sheet. This is very, very crucial. We were just asking the ISRO chief what could go wrong. This is the most crucial stage. What happened in Kalpana Chawla's episode was that a portion of the heat shield had knocked off while it was taking off. Yeah, that's, and that's, that, is that how, was what was captured too. That, right? is, that is what happened. So this will start re-entry. Once it re-enters at this phase, if you're an astronaut inside, here's what you see. You see fire all around you. If I can ask you, from the Kalpana Chawla episode, what has uh, really changed in the sense that the fact that you have to be extremely particular about yes. what, you're, what you're really fighting at, or at the speed that it is going in, the heat that it basically generates, what has really changed from right. that ep episode? A lot of things. Material science has changed. So the material which is now used for heat shield has evolved considerably, number one. Number two... Computers are able to monitor if anything goes wrong. We suspected something similar, something may have happened wrong in the Boeing case. Right. That's why the computer said this is not worth it. The decision makers also changed. Nobody takes, uh, takes those risks anymore. So that has changed. And I think Elon Musk is the change. So <laughs> that's also a big change because this thing has done 40 plus missions and is doing quite well. Okay. So then when it re-enters, the temperature is about 2000 centigrade. So we'll just show that also. Do you have that? Separate? Okay, we, we have that. Uh, yeah, we, it'll basically show the oh, splashdown. Oh, beautiful. Wonderful. We'll this is so this a thing freefall is, moment. Yeah, this is everything now. So okay. we, we started at the stage of the fire. Yeah. That stage, the temperature is at 2000 centigrades. If you're an this astronaut... This side, this right, right here, just before this, when okay. the fire was there. If you're an astronaut inside it, all you see outside is basically flames, plasma, fire all around you. Your communication is cut because of the electromagnetic 
you know, so there is zero communication. Zero communication. We don't know. NASA does not hear you. Nobody hears you. you. Only four of you can talk to each other. And it's terribly vibrating. The G-forces are now building up. You can feel the blood gushing back and forth in your head. And, you know, if you're not a good Navy pilot, like Sunita Williams says, you may actually black out. So right. astronauts are trained to do this. This is a very, very, this is the most dangerous phase. Once it comes because down... Because of the friction? Because there's because of the too heat, much of friction inside? Because of the heat, because of the lack of communication, because of the G-forces, and because of the fact that most accidents in space are prone to happen here. One little error in this heat shield will send everything into disaster. Right. And we have seen it. So this is the most crucial phase. It's not happened yet. This is the, this is the last five, six minutes when it will happen. So this, the entry from the uh, time that it makes the entry, how long does this process really take place? You mean this entire process? Yes. Yeah, yeah. It's about last five minutes. It's the last it's five the last minutes. minutes. Re-entry is a few minutes. Okay. The whole journey is of 20 plus hours, all for this. And once it reaches a height of about, uh, you know, a speed of about, not 27,000 was the speed of beginning. Once it, it is at a speed of about 560 kilometers uh, per hour, which is, in space sense, very slow, uh, you start opening the drogue parachutes. The drogue okay. parachute initially, uh, you know, sust the, the, they arrest the speed uh, very rapidly till it comes to a height of a few kilometers, two, three kilometers, and then the main parachutes go off, which are the four main parachutes, which then bring down the speed from 180 kilometers per hour, which is nothing in space, right. to as low as something less than 20 kilometers per hour is when you, uh, you crash into the, or you don't crash, you land into the waters of Atlantic or the Gulf of Mexico, or is it called Gulf of America these days? <laughs> and right now you have to say Gulf of America, I'm assuming. Right. But you know, can I ask you, perhaps it might sound a little lame, how do you really position it landing at a particular area, like the fact that it has to land in this very area, it could have landed somewhere else. Is there a possibility that it could have landed somewhere else too? So there, there is, is, is there a margin? There? There's a margin, of course. How do you select it? First, let's see that. You, you look at the clouds, right. you want to minimize the weather, uh, you have to have a good weather, much like any other aircraft landing. And the other is ocean current. Right. The ocean currents have to be as low as possible so that the rescue is faster and the impact, the, the, uh, the sudden, because it'll, it'll still you know, bang into the water, right. that impact is lowest. So you look at that to select a landing site and of course it has to be closer to your shores so you can do the rescue faster. Right. Now the question is how far you can go, not very far, I mean you can't land on, uh, you can't just you know, crash and land, you have to be on the ocean but some margin is allowed. And how do you control it? So it's not out of control completely. So the, the systems, onboard systems, can use the thrusters to shift here and there. You can control, uh, depending on the wind, when you release the, uh, the parachutes. Uh, you can adjust that. So using that, and the, now the systems are very complicated. The AI is quite good on this. It can sort of pinpoint at the place where it wants to land. Even if it doesn't land exactly where it wants to land, unlike Chandrayaan, which had to land exactly there, right. this can land anywhere on Earth, uh, as long as there's water and there's some American ship which can rescue it. Right. So you have this entire process uh, that has been put together, Srijan. Thank you very much. Let's just once again go back as we continue with our conversation and uh, this entire coverage, Rakshita. Yeah. As we've been saying, while it's fascinating, many would say it's terrifying too. And the reason why, as Srijan was pointing out, terrifying at the moment when it actually enters uh, the Earth's uh, atmosphere.